Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Tink. That's in my ZZ, not in my SS. You already know the channel is Natural Policies TV, y'all. Like I said, I will be working on my consistency this year. So we're here to talk about in the description box below Euphoria season two. Yeah, season two, episode two. Um, out of touch, baby. Episode Cassie, you whore. Cassie, you whore. Nate, you son of a bitch. Let's just get there, y'all. Let, let's just get there. All right, so pretty much the episode picks up, of course, when we left off at after Fesco beat the shit out of Nate, damn near beat his ass to death on the New Year's Eve party. Um, Nate getting rushed to the hospital. But before then, Nate opened up his eyes and saw Cassie. And all of a sudden, boom, fell in love with Cassie. Like the beginning part of the episode, you know, Rue narrating, Nate done fell for Cassie, but it's still complicated with Maddie, so he don't know what he's going to do about Maddie. His daddy over there praying for him the whole time. He in his little coma, whatever. He having this little dream sequence of how life would have been being with Cassie if he wouldn't ignore Cassie. But, you know, Maddie brought out the worst of him. Cassie brought out something else in him. I'm like, what? But okay. Anyways, then we see them making love. Apparently, she got pregnant. You know, um, Nate and his daddy cool to a certain extent because, you know, they show daddy doing his fuck shit, you know, okay, you know, okay, I'll be. And then all of a sudden, once Cal get finished praying for uh, Nate, Nate go into shock. And then all of a sudden, that's when Cassie just gives birth because, you know, she was pregnant with her from dream, uh, dream sequence, excuse me, dream sequence or whatever that he was having. And I was just like, well, damn. One thing I can't say, Euphoria, y'all know how to capture them beginning sequence because uh, last episode with uh, Fesco Grandmama, now this one with Nate, baby, I I just just know that I enjoyed it. But, you know, I don't see how this going to work out. Look like Cassie done, girl, you done fucked up for real. Nate, you too mad at baby. We going to pray for y'all. Anyways, so after the dream sequence, we get back to, you know, Jules and uh, Rule rule sorry jules and rue they're in a relationship now and rue ass is all in oh when uh she see jules and they kissing or whatever then all of a sudden the shit is just blown away or should i say the moment is all just blown away when she notices elliot elliot old boy that she been getting high with you know from the last episode and at that moment i was like okay it ain't that big of a deal but you notice it was very awkward as shit because when elliot came up to uh, Rue and Jules. Jules looking like, hey, you know, this is my girlfriend. And that's when Elliot be like, well, not be like, but Elliot was like, um, I didn't know y'all was together. And I was like, oh, Rue, really? Really, Rue? Really? I mean, come on now. And apparently they've been spending time together getting high and shit. And Rue ain't never once mentioned anything about Jules. That's that bullshit, Rue. You out of line. And Jules felt it too. Jules was pissed. And Jules walked the fuck out. But I would have been mad too. Like, so you talking about you love me the night of New Year's Eve. We've been together. And you've been kicking it with this motherfucker on the side. And you ain't telling what was up. But again, Rue ain't really. Should I say Rue ain't tell Jules all that. But you wrong, Rue. You wrong. So anyways, um... They go into the bathroom or whatever, and all of a sudden we see, of course, Jules is in there and Cassie's in there or whatever. We find out some more about Cassie. Now, Cassie, oh, nasty, dirty, hoish ass, okay? She been through a depression the whole time since this whole thing happened with Nate. But my thing is this, Cassie, and did anybody uh, peep this? Girl, your ass ain't been showering, you ain't been eating. You, did you just fuck Nate at that New Year's Eve? So your ass ain't showered since then? So you just got Nate juices just, just dried up in you. What the girl? I guess she walking around here depressed, don't want to do shit, and all of a sudden that's when Lexi like, uh, why do you still have Nate's blood on your leg? You been walking around with this boy blood and his semen all up in you. Like, what the hell is wrong with you, girl? Ain't that much depression in the world? Get your ass in the shower. Probably smelling like all types of just matted dog and old dog and garbage can't. Just I don't know. Just what? I don't know. A thousand year old toilet water, if that's even a, a lie or something. Just, oh, just thinking. Girl, get out of that damn depression. Well, no, 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 because you can't tell someone to do with depression. But you can at least take a shower while you're depressed. You ain't got to be stinking and depressing. Like, damn, at least be smelling all clean and shit while you're depressed. But I guess, girl, I mean, people depressed and whatever eat differently, whatever. Anyways, um, after we go through that situation, that's where we basically see, and I'm looking at my notes because that's why I'm looking down or whatever, you know. We see that Maddie is, not Maddie, but Cassie is just like, I don't, she don't know what to do. She don't know what to do. But all of a sudden, that's when the shit 
basically she caught sort of relapsing her feelings. That's how I feel because Maddie mentions to Cassie that Nate texted her. Nate sure did text her, text basically saying, um, thank you for being there for me. I would love you always. And I was like, oh Lord. So Maddie, of course, thinks Cassie is her best friend, girl. But you know, and Cassie's face is just like, oh, really? really? Bitch, you just, ugh, I guess. Anyway, mm, whatever. So while Maddie is telling Cassie what's going on, we find out that Maddie is now babysitting for this rich couple. And, you know, she just basically let a little boy. Just too cute. And go on, Maddie. Make your money, okay? If you're going to be a babysitter, at least babysit up in this rich-ass house. And, girl, that closet, whoever the uh, Mrs. the lady of the house is, that closet. Baby, Maddie, I ain't mad at you. Now, I wouldn't have tried on her clothes, but I would have been in that bitch. That closet was to die for, baby. Okay. Maddie got a little carried away, you know, and didn't realize it was coming home. She over there trying to take the shit off. Girl fucked around and left the damn drawer open where the earrings was. I was like, now, come on, girl. You got to clean your damn fingerprints and clean up your mess better than that. But anyways, so as she's leaving or whatever, she hears the um, the lady of the house ask her for help. And I'm thinking she got caught. But now she didn't get caught. The lady just asked her to unzip um, her dress. But I felt like it was some type of awkwardness, some, you know, some, thank you for being here, you know. The uh, what lady of the house liking the little young tenderoni thing and it ain't a girl. I'm sorry, it ain't a boy, it's a girl. But, you know, I'm just saying, we shall see how that goes. But I guess. Anyways, um, back after all of that, everyone else is, of course, is in the uh, restroom still because we go back to the whole Jules where Jules is running into the restroom. Maddie talking about she was a little cute pregnant. She over there canoodling, talking to the girls. You know, she got Kat, she got Lexi. Um, I don't think Cassie was there because Cassie's still upset or whatever, but some girl was sitting in the corner. I don't know who that girl is, but you know, it is what it is, you know. Now, Kat basically is staying face about her relationship, you know, because Maddie says, you know, her good girl relationship is triggering to the others because, you know, Maddie used to be in toxic, talking about Kat. But Kat like, yeah, I love her. Mm -hmm. But she lying. She just want to get fucked all good because in her little sequence or whatever, she chilling with Ethan or whatever. And I think Ethan is, Ethan is just too cute. Ethan goes to the restroom. Ethan get killed by some type of Dothrakian. Y'all took it back to Game of Thrones. I was like, Lord Jesus. And basically, she gets her ass done the way Danny got done by, uh, uh, what was his name? Jason Momoa's character, how she got done in uh, Game of Thrones season one. I was like, all right. All right, Kat. Kat just want that cat bait, okay? That's all she wants. But anyways, um, Nate was released from the hospital. And, you know, his dad, like, how the hell you get your ass whooped? Unprovoked, really? They ain't believe him. They ain't believe nothing. You know, his mama didn't believe him. They ain't believe him. But, you know, Nate don't want to talk about it. He want to just let it be. I'm like, okay. Anyways, um, as Nate gets home, he calls Cassie. Cassie freaking the fuck out. So bad to the point where her mama peeped, like, she ain't depressed over being single. She depressed over something else. Yeah, she depressed because she loved Nate. Hoish ass. And feeling guilty with Maddie, whatever. Bitch, you need to feel guilty. So hoish ass. Anyways, so Nate basically promised to see her next weekend to chill her the fuck out or whatever. But basically let it be known, like, look, if Maddie finds out about this, Maddie's going to try to kill me. But bitch, she going to kill you. She gonna kill you, okay? She gonna, she gonna kill you first. And then they show the whole thing about Maddie fucking people up. Some bitch head in the damn locker. Pushed some bitch to the damn dry thing in the bathroom. And then got some bitch face pressed against the window. I was like, well, damn, Maddie. Maddie about that life. Fuck you, bitch. She about that life. I was like, okay. But Cassie, bitch, you need to be scared. Because you was out of line. Out of line. Let's get to some. So after that whole situation, whatever, we go back to Rue and Jews. Rue like, baby, what you mad about? Baby? Oh, high ass. But Rue like, up. Uh, Bitch, you didn't tell him that we was in a relationship and I could tell by the way you staring at his ass you like him. I'm just like, oh, yeah, she do. She like him. She like him. She, you, you like him, Rue, because the moment that Jules walk off because Jules couldn't chill or whatever and um stay the night with her. Well, not stay the night, but stay out late so she don't get grounded. That's when Elliot come through to Rue and be like, I got you in trouble. She was like, yeah, you did. You want to get high? And the whole, <laughs> the look on Rue's face like, hmm. <laughs> Oh, high ass, but whatever. Anyways, um, she basically gonna get high. So after that, we go to Fesco's house, and for some reason, Cassie is coming home or whatever, right? And the moment she get home, we see uh um Nate's dad there, uh crew, Q, whatever his name is, uh Clue, whatever his name. We see we see his ass there basically like we need to ask you some questions. They don't believe shit that Cassie is saying. They don't believe a damn thing, so much to the point where 
Um, Nate's dad let it be known. I can get the cops involved. You know, we can do text messages. We can do what's up. But you're going to tell me what's up. Look at me. Don't look at Lexi. Look at me. I don't believe you. So what's up? I was like, ooh. And Cassie asked, she ain't even worried about the fact that, you know, um, about what could happen as far as with uh, Fesco or whatever. She worried about the fact that Cassie, not Cassie, but Maddie going to see the damn text message that she sent to Nate talking about, I think it was a mistake that we had sex. I was like, that's all you worried about? Because Nate did hurry up and call her ass back talking about, don't you ever text me no shit like that again? She's like, sorry, bitch. Yeah, don't leave no paper trail with your whole ass. Come on, girl. But anyways. I'm just saying, I had to wrap that part up quick. But then we go to Fazco's house before Cassie get them questions because, you know, I have to backtrack. Fazco got Faye staying in the house. I was like, Lord. Faye with the messed up collagen lips, you know, the collagen gone bad operation. Ashtray is pissed. I don't blame Ashtray. Ashtray pissed the fuck off. Don't want the bitch being there. Come to find out Faye high ass pushed the damn uh, leasing manager or whatever off the balcony because apparently he was saying mean things. The cops coming in trying to look for her ass, but um, Clue, whatever his name is, no, Custer, Custer love her so damn much, Custer don't want to basically, you know, let her go. So he called Fesco to help him out. Put uh, Faye ass in the damn vent before the police could come in and then tell her ass to hide behind the dumpster. I was like, well, damn, talk about real love, Bonnie and Clyde and shit. But okay, you lay low and I'm going to get you when we handle this shit. That's basically what he said. When she get in the car with Fesco, she try to justify her shit. Fesco's like, I don't give a fuck what you did. I really don't care. Just sit in the ass in the car and shut the hell up. When they get to the house, Fesco let it be known. You know, Fesco give her that mama speech. You know that speech y'all give before y'all go in the grocery store with your mama. If you got a black mama, you understand. Don't be touching shit. Don't be asking for shit. Don't be looking for shit. Basically, that's what he gave us. Said, don't, don't say, don't fuck with Ashtray. Don't fuck with my shit. Don't go in my room. Don't say shit to Ashtray. Just sit your ass on the couch and shut the hell up. She's like, okay. And then all of a sudden, Fez could be like, you want some of my sandwich? Are you sweet on her? Or do you like Lexi? But anyways, I'm just saying. I thought that shit was funny though. Anyways, um, after, after all, basically Lexi gives up the whole name of, not Lexi, but uh, Cassie gives up the name that Fesco beat the shit out of um, uh, Nate, Lexi and Cassie are arguing like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why would you snitch? And girl, I'm, I'm, I'm with Lexi. Like, come on now. Like, you know, I like him. The person thing I like, you want to do some shit like that? Talking about Fesco made his own. Just shut your whole ass up, Cassie. I don't like you. I mean, you a good actor. You a good actor. I don't like your character. But anyway, whatever. Um, after, Ruth, um... Lexi and uh, Cassie get into that fight. We get Lexi's backstory about her being passive aggressive, letting shit go. How she even had a moment where she was about to tell Rue's mom about drugs and Rue didn't give a shit. She was like, okay. And Lexi still basically was very passive aggressive and didn't speak up for herself. But it's okay, Lexi. We always like that. I was like that. I had to get out of that. So it's okay, girl. You know, you're in high school. You're an actor. You're a character, I mean. And, you know, now she like, fuck this shit. After that whole thing, as far as Nate Daddy coming to their house, she's like, fuck this. I'm about to do something. So, I don't know what she did, but she got a whole new swag with her walking. And she walked into the store, some corner store, and all of a sudden, Nate Daddy, we see Nate Daddy following her with a gun. I'm like, was you really about to give up fast code? You better not. But anyways, uh, Ruth was supposed to go see Jules. Um, apparently, Jules wanted to apologize to her and invite her over for dinner. But she said, no, I'm going to go to an NA meeting. And she got high with Elliot. And got high as hell. Them blunts look a little full, look a little stuff. I, don't, I ain't mad at you, girl, but that snorting shit I don't get with. Now, this whole conversation between Elliot and Rue, though, definitely some chemistry there. And this is why I feel Jules was right. You do like him. You just, you know, you just don't, you don't know it yet. Or you don't want to own up to it. But you like him. Maybe not the way you like Jules, but you like him. So they started talking about, you know, her whole history and backstory with drugs. Basically how it started, you know, her, di her dad dying of cancer when she was um 14 and now two years later you know and Elliot basically let it be known like yeah that's kind of young but I mean I don't think we're good friends you know he started questioning their friendship then and being on like how the hell Jules don't know that you do drugs and she's like I hide it well no baby I think Jules knows she just love you too much and she's willing to look over I'm sorry look past it to a certain extent that's how I feel but whatever but that's when Elliot lets Rue know like I don't think we good for each other I really don't I don't think we are but that's when Rue let it be known. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, girl. You liking him. You feeling him. But it is what it is. Now we get to Kat and Ethan. Now, again, you know, Kat over there complaining. She don't know what's wrong with her. She feel like something wrong with Ethan. She did a pros and cons, a list about Ethan. Come to find out it was her ass. It's you, Kat. 
is you. You don't like the Mr. Good Guy. You want a bad boy, but it's okay. He good. But obviously she had an issue. She had a damn love yourself moment with all these different personalities. So much to the point where Ethan um, basically said, I'll be outside in 20 minutes. They were supposed to go bowling. Her ass, instead of going bowling with her man by herself, she invited Jules and Maddie. That's some bullshit right there. That is some bullshit. Now, the whole time that Jules and Maddie and um, Kat are bowling because, you know, Jules went out to go bowling instead because, you know, she was upset about Rue not coming. And her daddy, Jules' daddy, think that Rue is not a good influence for um, for Jules. I don't blame him. But, you know, um, while they're all going bowling, Rue is driving home. Well, not driving home. She ain't got a car. She riding her bike home. We see Cassie as up there running into Nate's car. And I'm like, what the fuck? I thought you... Hoish ass. This was such a hoish ass scene. So Maddie calls Nate. Nate don't pick up. And then Maddie calls um Cassie. Cassie don't pick up either. And Cassie over there smiling and shit. So the whole time Cassie is with Nate, they're bowling. Ethan is pissed off because at the end of the day, Cat, you did that shit for a cock block because you ain't want to be with his ass. Ethan, it's okay, baby. I understand, but he was pissed off though. Like, really, bitch? This is me and your time. You bought your motherfucking friends. But it is what it is. So the whole time they're having fun, uh, Cassie and Nate up there talking, take her to some abandoned house, let it be known that we can't do this and we can't. This whole episode is basically you saying one thing and then doing another. Because he might have said that, but the way he acted, especially when Cassie bitch ass ran off in the damn wilderness or whatever to some abandoned house, and then all of a sudden they're kissing and fucking. I'm like, girl, what about the damn... uh um? the thorns or you getting the damn splinter up your ass or something this is the abandoned house girl ain't no stairs just wood like y'all want to fuck where the wood is y'all getting split just nasty just nasty girl did you take a shower i'm just saying i'm going off on cassie but y'all know what it is i ain't feeling that i ain't feeling that at all cassie you wrong for that bullshit you is wrong too nate but them is still gonna be a good season because i can't wait for maddie to find out i hope maddie beat the shit out of your ass cassie i hope she do with your scary ass but anyway after Rue leaves, um, Rue leaves Elliot, she goes to an NA meeting with her coach, um, Ali. Ali already know her ass is high. Her ass so damn high, she over there taking a the staircase lift. I must have failed the fuck out. <laughs> that was funny. But anyways, um, after they have the meeting, Ali introduces, um, himself to Rue's mom because he drops her off at home. Um, we see basically Fesco and uh, Lexi because Lexi goes over to the store where Fesco is and she gets all like, wait a minute, who is this girl? Because she noticed Faye there. And instead of Fesco letting it be known that um this ain't nobody, he ain't say nothing. But it was awkward, awkward as hell. That's when Nate's daddy come in the, um, come in the uh, fold or whatever and it's just all awkward. Ashtray is on go. Faye asks him, is he a cop? And he's like, no, I'm not a cop. And as they're, you know, doing this little standoff, and I'm thinking he about to pull out the gun. He basically pull out $20 or whatever. He let it be known, I'm just a concerned father. And walks off. Fesco knew something was up. And Lexi, baby, you look like you tried to set him up too. So I hope that don't mess up y'all relationship. But that was good. But the ending is what got me. I love how Jules and Maddie's relationship is. When Maddie told Jules that she's thinking about getting back with Nate after the bowling alley, that's when Jules basically was like, don't do it. Just don't. Like, just don't show up. I can't help you, you know, because she loved that toxic shit because, you know, they was talking about relationship stuff at the bowling alley when um, Kat and Ethan was together and Maddie and Jules was off to the side. And I love the way Jules let it be known talking about, I wish you can see the way everybody else sees you. And damn it, I ain't gonna lie, I was a victim of that. I think we all are to a certain extent, but I just loved how Jules just came in there for the kill and gave Maddie a hug. Maddie, don't go back to the Nate. You deserve so much better, girl, with your toxic ass too. <laughs> but you definitely deserve way more than Nate. So when Carol got his ass home, and basically uh Nate, well when Cat when Nate got home, Cal talked to Nate because you know Nate was out fucking Cassie old whole ass. Nate asked him, "How the hell you let um not not Nate?" Cal asked him, "How you let a drug dealer beat your ass?" And that's when basically Nate, Nate let it be known, like, look, the shit you did with Jules is why they came for me or why Nate beat my ass because I'm trying to protect you. Cal tried to apologize. He's like, you know what? Just save it. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. He's like, I didn't know she was in high school. That's all right. But she found out that you recorded her. And the whole time, Cal face was like, what the fuck? And he asked him, well, where's the tape? Where's the tape? Where's the tape? And we gonna see where the hell is this tape? Because we all know Maddie's the one that got the tape. And that's how the shit go off. Baby, this shit was good. I can't wait to episode three, y'all. Hopefully you guys enjoy. But anyways... 
I am Miss Tink. That's M-I-Z-Z, not M-I-S-S. You already know the channel's not the power sister TV, y'all. Y'all have a blessed one. Until next time, deuces. Bye.